for Supercross Lights East Heat 1. And Dean Wilson is in this one as well. There's the number 15. That Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki, you'll see the 139 in here as well. That will be Malcolm Stewart. As we get set to go racing, the month of Moto Mayhem continuing on speed. And what a way to just pick it right up where we left off having uh, Barsha and Wilson <laughs> in the same heat race now. So yeah. uh, fireworks could be extending long past opening ceremonies here in the Georgia Dome. They could just kick it right into the yeah. first heat of the night. There's a lot of heat in this. There's a lot of heat in this uh, qualifier, no doubt. I'm interested to see what the 139 there, Suzuki City, uh, Malcolm Stewart, that. he was the sixth fastest qualifier, so he'd be the third fastest in this heat. Right, and, and Gannon Audette the 533 really fast at Houston at their first round and uh, hit the ground a couple times but rebounded you know from each crash and uh, he's been training with Ryan Dungey as well so uh, should be should be good I'm looking forward to it but there's I mean this is some good stuff also you see the 57 Blake Baggett is in here also oh, this, he was super fast this this is a stacked heat yeah <laughs> you got that right it's like the main event every race here is like the main event here's Marcia right there getting focused i asked him if he was okay with you know the the attitude and the hard racing he said yeah absolutely because i'm very cool with it he's got an issue with that wrist too jeff look at that on that right wrist right here he's got a brace on let's see how it holds up Old shot, who's it gonna go to? Barsha looks like he's gonna come out with it. Followed by Blake Baggett. Some rough riding, looks like uh, Malcolm Stewart with another great start. Yep, Malcolm's on that 139, jumping to the inside and taking over second place. Alex Martin was up in there early on. Baggett drops back to third, and where's Dean Wilson? Remember, top nine transfers straight to the main. I've seen Dean Wilson. He got a really bad jump off the gate, and then going down the straightaway, he connected bars with another guy, and he was dead last going into the first turn. This is a cool story. Right here, getting to see Malcolm Stewart wanting to redeem himself from last weekend, starting it off right here in the heat race. You know, it's interesting, Malcolm told me earlier today when we were talking, he said, you know, I know I will never get out from underneath the shadow of my brother, no matter what, but it's okay. I said, well, what, what has your brother said to you about it? He said, just to go out, have fun, know that as a family, we're always here for you, and that we love you. Yeah, Looks he, a lot like <laughs> older brother right there, like, oh, just, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. afraid to let the rear wheel get a little get a little loose in the warp section, but look how fast Malcolm Stewart is. And this yeah. team oh, look is at that. one of the support teams. Oh, oh he's oh, getting oh. right next to him. Going hey. after Barsha, closing in on the battle for second. And he hasn't been racing his whole life, you know, like his like his older brother. So I really gotta commend him on how fast he has gotten in a short amount of time. It, yeah, and there was just a few years ago, I was wondering if if Malcolm was Ooh, even. Here oh. it is! Oh, he almost got into the rear wheel of Barsha. And now that allows Baggett to close in on that 57. That's another one of those pro circuit Monster Energy Kawasaki's. What I was going to say is I, uh, I wasn't sure that Malcolm was going to make a career out of this or even what. Barsha first, or I should say Baggett for second. Malcolm right back after him. Barsha still holds on to the lead. Yeah, but here in the last couple of years, it seems like Malcolm's interest in, you know, continuing on into Supercross has grown. But watch this. Watch out. He just pivots right there and is actually going for the jugular. Yeah. I mean, he, he was a bike link or so yeah. behind. That's something maybe a, I mean, see, uh, maybe yeah, a couple of bike He sets him up links. nice. You can see, but he's losing his front end a little bit as he, as he was trying to accelerate and get there. But it was a good setup move, just a little bit short. Well, but, if... Barsha has a problem with that wrist, Jeff, on that right wrist. He's not showing it so far. Well, and he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He needs to get out and ride his race, okay, and hit all the jumps perfect, try not to have any hard landings. And the best way to do that is, I mean, look at this. He's got uh, about two seconds over Baggett. And uh, just get out there and just, just try to hit everything perfect. But wow, look at the riders comes. coming through the whoops. Wilson is up to eighth according to timing and scoring, so he is in a transfer spot. Those highlighted green numbers are your top nine with the transfers. Yeah, that's, that, that's doing work, you know, in, in, in three laps here in this class where all these riders are so fast. Look Let's go happens. back and see what happened to him here as this one got underway. Watch 
for the 15, Jeff, right there. Oh, right there, bottom left of your screen. He gets bumped Whoa. by Stewart, uh, the 89 also. Yeah, that's Taylor Futrell. Futrell, yeah. Futrell gets into him, and uh, he's Dead just last. buried right there. But wait to work, work his way through. Barsha right now, his fastest is a, basically a 50 flat. Uh, Baggett's had a 49, and Wilson's had a 49-7. So they're all pretty close. Yeah. Malcolm still holding down third. Hunter Hewitt sits there in fourth, and Martin on the 46 giving chase. Martin didn't quite have the drive out of the woods there for that on off. This, yeah. this is a really technical track. You guys can see all these 90 degree turns. And like we said when we were watching the onboard camera, all these on offs, it's hard to get stopped for those turns when you're trying to get over the jump and clipping your rear wheel, the thing comes off, you're not braking. Here's the last lap. Final flight over the triple there for Barsha as he works his way through some of the sand here inside the Georgia Dome. Blake Baggett there on the right side yeah. of your screen. He's putting on a yeah. He's putting on Blake he's, Baggett just he's turned to 48-9. He was the second faster than Barsha last time around. He's picked off seven tenths of a second on Barsha yeah. on that last lap. He's not cutting him any slack, there's no, no doubt about it. And, and only six laps here. It's gotta be tough, Ricky, to ride with that brace, yeah? Yeah, you know, I think, the I think side. you know what, you guys might not agree with me, but I think it makes him look a little bit smoother. <laughs> Myself. Barsha checkered flag as you watch from the roof of the Georgia Dome. Justin Barsha takes the win. Baggett's going to get a transfer as well. Malcolm Stewart's going on to the main. Well, this Wilson fought his way up to fifth. He's going through as we watch the battle for the final transfer spot. Rusk will take the final spot, and Smith will take everybody else with him to the LCQ. Wes Smith has been riding pretty pretty good this season. The opening round at Houston, he looked good, but uh, not getting the start right there to allow him to get through that heat. Yeah, he's, he's been riding good for sure, and those starts definitely are so crucial. There he is you right know, there, 44. You know, they're, they're so crucial just because you don't have much time, and all these guys are good. Yeah, and then you see Barsha, he got to start executed perfect heat race. It's exactly what he wants to do, and he did turn a 49-2 that uh, last lap. There are the nine riders going straight to the main. How about Dean Wilson fighting his way up to a fifth after such a horrible start in this? Yeah, that's some pretty good rides all the way through right there. And uh, the track was in much better condition there than what it was in qualifying practice. So they put a little bit of water down. Seems like there's some more traction. So Marsh is going straight to the main and taking some of the other heavy hitters with him. We'll have heat number two of Monster Energy Supercross Lights East when we come back to the Georgia Dome live here on Speed. Justin Barsha just said to me that heat race was a true test. Justin, you hurt your right wrist this afternoon during practice. How bad is it, and are you going to be able to hold on for 15 laps tonight? Yeah, I mean, it definitely hurts, but I'm definitely going to be able to pull up the 15 laps. That heat race was a test for me, and uh, I know myself I can do it. It's going to take a true champion to do it today, and I'm just going to have to work really hard, and this is my year to do it, so I'm going to push as hard as I can. Best of luck to you tonight. Two for two heat race wins for Justin Barsha. Six laps, main event for the lights, East 15. Yep, it's going to be a little bit different, but uh, he's smiling, so their wrist is fine. And actually performed really well. I mean, having that wrist guard on your right wrist, you know, to me would be, you know, kind of tough to ride with. But that thing's pretty advanced also, that brace. Yeah, and, and the, the tough thing about it is they don't have any weekends off now. It's time, so you don't have time to rest like they did after their first round in yeah, Houston. That's right. Yeah. That's like on the West Coast where Josh Hansen's yeah. got, you know, two months to heal up. Yeah, he's taking a break right now. There's Ryan Sipes. Got the GoPro camera mounted to his head. We get some video of his work tonight. Hey, he's been flying. Yeah, he was uh, fastest again here today with a 48 flat. Wow. So that's moving. moving. Yeah. 30-second board is up. Getting closer to go racing. There's Wharton right there. Blake Wharton ready to go. Another one of those riders could steal the show here tonight as we get ready to go racing. And Anderson uh, just to the right of him, the 156 there. He, he was pretty quick also. Here we go. Now look, what a good first turn. Oh, oh look at that coming up the inside was Warden. 
He'll steal the whole shot with Sipes and Larson coming along with him. Yeah, notice it was uh, P.J. Larson, the 923, who we spoke about earlier, had the start. And when he went wide in the first turn, he really just he didn't show much aggressiveness through there. Just kind of tiptoed around. And the other riders, they'll watch and see that the 25 and the 21 stuck by on the inside there. Sipes now on that DNA shred sticks. Yamaha out front. Ryan Sipes leading here in heat two. Sipes has been quick. Houston in here, he has been a standout rider. And if not for the mistake, oh, oh down goes Wharton. Wharton loses. Oh, and then they start piling into him. That's Renner on the 94. Oh, Who comes driving in there? Ricky Renner on the 94, and Wharton can't get going. Wow, so Wharton there, he's trying to get the bike. I've seen his left foot. He's trying to put the bike neutral. into gear. And the there transmissions that they run on these race bikes, they set it up to where that it's really tough to go into neutral so that they don't hit them, you know, hit neutral while they're racing, while they're yeah. going from first to second gear. Yeah, I broke my collarbone hitting neutral in the face of a jump. Oh. So. Watch yeah. Wharton here, just comes in, and I got a feeling he's going to grab some front brake right there and uh, gently slide it down. Slide it down. Yeah, that, it, it, I mean, it, all it takes is a millisecond of a mistake, and, yeah. and you're on the mat. And you can see how loose it is there they, in yes. between qualifying and uh, the race, you see how loose it is on top. Boom! That's Renner oh, there. And watch him. He he keeps his hand, left hand, on the clutch, and Renner gets back going. So that's going to put Renner. Uh, He's down in 16th as we 16. go back to the front. Watch Ryan Sykes, our leader here, yeah, picking can, his way through there, Ricky. Yeah, you can see when the when the cross flags are out, that means that someone is hurt. So you cannot triple. You have to single, 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 all three jumps. And uh, or else you're penalized. So uh, I mean, this is year. This is Ryan Sipes' year. He's been in the business a long time, yeah. and he's always fast. That's yeah. Larson right there on the 927 in second place. Yeah, PJ on the uh, J Star KTM here. Like I said, I was really impressed at Houston with PJ, and I don't. He, he didn't really get a chance to show us what he had. Okay, but yeah. you can see right now that uh, he's putting a strong ride. Sipes yeah. uh, at a 51-1. Last lap around, Larson was a 50.5. So Larson, one of the fastest riders on the track. Well, and, well Anderson at 49-2. So Anderson is the man on the move right now. That's Jason Anderson wow. running in third. Oh. And more problems for the Geico Honda of Wharton. Maybe his front brake sticking or something. I don't know. But yeah, it, it, you notice that. Uh, well, let's take a look at it. We've got a replay here. There Comes in here, and let's see if he kind of does the same the thing. Grabs some front brake and yeah. just lays it on down. But at least he didn't have a wall to smack into, Ricky. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a. Uh, either either one of them are fun. I can sure it's not what you want to do. Luckily, last night mine wasn't my fault, so uh, I can blame it on somebody else's. Uh, you know, brain, brain laps. You notice know, right there, Anderson, wow. he, he knights the front wheel a couple times coming into that turn after the finish line. So yep. that tells me that that loose soil there, it was a really hard, dry base here today. It, this this track is much drier than it normally is. Normally, Atlanta, here in the dome, it's really tacky, a lot of Soft. grip. Yeah, there's a lot. It's very marbly at the bottom of the turns, mid the bottom of the turns. And those guys are going in there thinking they got more grip than they really got, and they're losing their front end. Makes it tough. Man, those 90 degree turns are so technical. You have to be so precise and on your game to make up time. You see how greasy and shiny it is? That's Anderson we're watching running in third. High above the Georgia Dome track. Watching off the ceiling. We keep an eye on Larson working his way around. Sipes, though, just turned to 49.3. Larson picked it up. He, he turned to 49.6 and Anderson to 49.2. And Anderson didn't even really have a good lap, it didn't look like. Yeah, 